got black ball. Mm. You got black ball. He's like, bro, I'm at the radio station and ain't looking too good for you right now. What the fuck you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Mind you, I'm hot right now. I'm just, my shit going. I'm like, fuck I do. You feel me? He's like, some shit about some plex. I was like, plex? What you mean, plex? So that one move that happened at my album release party almost derailed my whole career. The biggest mistake I made probably just not, you know what I'm saying? Being being on top of my business at, in the beginning. You ain't read none of your contracts? No. Who read them? My lawyer. My lawyer was, it was a conflict of interest. My lawyer was my manager's lawyer. Money Baby was a really big record for you. I hate going to any clubs. Why? I hate still be playing on records. Why? I hate it. You hate it. You hate why, hearing why? your, I be like, you hearing I be like, your old shit? Nah, I don't hate hearing my own shit. I hate hearing old shit. It just, it just make you feel like you're still in the past. So you're stuck in the past. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm selling out tours, I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? My yeah. shit moving in the present. Do you feel underrated? Of course. As an artist? Somewhat. But I ain't really going for that phrase no more. to the baller show podcast available everywhere you get your podcast please make sure you like subscribe and share our youtube page at ball alert tv 100k subscribers hey, uh, we had a hundred thousand yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. k cap in the building yeah, 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 yeah. hey Gang. what's up sir what's right, you, up? For, you forgot we gotta introduce started. ourselves oh damn i fucked it all up man you listen that's why up. you can't drink man i go by the name of ferrari Simmons. i go by the name you know bt oct what up i did fuck it up okay. yeah it's okay yeah. hey kev is here hey kev is here hey. It's been a, it's been a minute, man. Yeah, man. How long was you, uh, K Cam supposed to come on the show? Since we, his we, dreads were small. Oh, well, <laughs> count, 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 last month. It was the last month. Yeah, it was last month. But then you know, I've been <clears throat> we've been trying to get the schedule down yeah, 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 for a while. Yeah, 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 for but sure, you've been moving sure. around because last time we saw you was BET, mm -hmm. and we was just trying to get you on that schedule, man. Um, because I feel like. We got to talk to you, man. Yeah, let's do it. I feel it's we time. got some shit to say. Now, we got to talk about some other shit, okay? You hosting the show with us, too, okay, I sir? I bet. Let me get comfortable. Let me lean, let me lean back a little bit. Okay. <laughs> OCT, what's happening? Just in case you missed it. All right, y'all. For All the Dogs has officially dropped yeah, by yeah. Drake. Mm -hmm. What are y'all thoughts about it? It's a lot of thoughts going around, but what do you guys think? Cause uh, I think this is one of Drake's best albums. I don't think it's the best album, but I think it's one of, his, it's one of my favorites. I think, I think it's great. Um, I think Drake has people saying that he isn't evolving. I think he has evolved mm -hmm. and he's catering towards the youth, which is what music is really all about. You and know, he gave us some of that old Drake because he gave you singy Drake and mm -hmm. he gave you some lyrics. Boy, that song with J. Cole, boy. Man. Yeah. J. Cole went crazy. Hey, yeah. Cam, what you think about the album? I like it. <laughs> Wait, what? No, I like it. I like it. I okay. ain't heard the whole thing, so I can't judge it. Okay. It's, it's a lot okay. of songs, though. It's yeah, like 22 songs. songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave yeah. us a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. the few I heard, I, I, I fought with. Can I cuss? I cuss yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. fought with, you know. Hey. Well, Joe Budden had a lot to say about it. Yo, dog, I had to look up how old this nigga was when I finished listening to the album. You are 36. Your birthday is in 20 days. I Googled that, too. You will be 37 years old. Get the fuck away from some of these younger niggas and stop fucking these 25 year olds. I miss the Drake that when he dropped, the rappers hit him. Not these little fucking kids. I don't give a fuck about you and Kai Sinat. That's gonna sound like, hey, go find some niggas your fucking age. We gotta start with the age shaming. First, first oh of all, we gotta start with the age shaming. Everybody is gonna get old at some point and oh you God. can't tell a grown man what age group should he hang out with? And I seen what academics uh, said about Joe Bunn's comment that he said, I talked to Drake and Drake wasn't tripping about him criticizing the music. He's like, I don't care if people criticize the music, but you're not going to criticize me as a man and yeah, like you don't sure. respect me. Sure. So I think that's what really made Drake upset was like the other comments that, you know, Joe Budden was talking about outside of the music. And how old is Kassanat? Kassanat is probably like 21, 22. He's a grown man too. It's not like mm -hmm. he's hanging around kids, right, but right. don't younger people keep older people young? Yeah. Like and, and you gotta relevant. You got to youth, man. You got to stay, you got to stay yeah. in the mix. You got to stay in the culture and know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's key. I, you got to do stuff like that. I do think Joe Button is entitled to his opinion. I mean, that's 
he's good at what he does for his content that he uh, puts out. Uh, but man, when 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 Drake oh, sent the call him a failure, I, I, know, I know where you going with this. But, no, no, no. When you lit the, that modest house, no, you gotta you gotta read line. what yeah. he said. Re- no, read it. Put it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That modest, you live in a modest house. Man. That's 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 rich ling- lingo for me, my boy. Yeah, he's but did you? Did you I have hear- a pretty nice modest house. <laughs> but but listen, <laughs> it's man, pretty damn big. At Joe Budden, you have failed at music. Damn. You left it behind to do what you are doing now in the clip because this is what actually pays your bills. You know, for any artist watching, just remember you are watching a failure give their opinion <laughs> on his idea on a recipe for success. Just to read a little bit of he what he snap. said. Damn. He's not. No, he so, probably been holding that in for a minute too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's, that's definitely like me. a back and forth. <laughs> Those two people don't like each other. Yeah, right, you right. So right. you know, we just sit back and watch that the popcorn. Some light you know? yeah, that Joe was... Biden is a harsh critic, though. Yeah, he's yeah. a harsh critic on everybody. Mm-hmm. I think I think like you been a critic towards somebody like Drake, who's been you know on top of the game for the past what thirteen years. I mean, that's kind of somebody you really don't want to argue with. And Man. I seen Joe Budden's response. Joe Budden's response was uh, Grow up some shit like that. He, Grow no, up or like, like that. he said something uh, like uh, Father Time is like undefeated. Uh, undefeated. And I was like, that's how you know he ain't have nothing yeah. to say after that for comment. Sure, for sure. Time is undefeated. I and mean, after so long, Drake is still on top. Yeah. But you know, one person who didn't like it was uh, Birdman. He said, Y'all oh, better yeah. stop playing with Drake. Birdman, Birdman don't play, man. Birdman, Birdman has don't play, spoken. Bro. I heard Birdman on Clubhouse. I don't want no Birdman smoke. <laughs> I heard Birdman. <laughs> Rich. Listen, I heard Birdman on Clubhouse. <laughs> and KK, you must have heard it because I heard. you didn't hear Birdman. Mm-hmm. What did you hear? What did he say? Yo. You talking shit? Birdman was on there really talking like the Godfather. Like I was, I was scared listening to the conversation. <laughs> he liked that. Like he was like, "Yo, you, you better." Did he say, "I'll trill y'all." I'll trill y'all. Y'all better put some respect. You better not play Listen, with. Yeah, don't play with Drizzy. Don't play. No, he said, "Don't play with the goat." Yeah, yeah. Hey, play sure. with the goat. For sure. I ain't gonna say it no more. Yeah. Ain't gonna let nobody touch Drake, man. Yeah, he yeah. said, "Hey, the, the, y'all, be, hey, y'all better one of best one of Drake's best albums, man." Period. What's yeah. your favorite song on the album? The one with J Cole, for sure. I like that. Hey, man. I like uh, the one with Yeet. It's it, to me, it's like the one with Yachty is fire too, though. But, I didn't hear that one yet. <laughs> yeah, it's a little towards the end. What the about you? With, I, I like away. From, I like away from home. Okay. I like the one. It's not for me, but the one with sexy red. That shit fire too. Oh my gosh! I yes, like I love that. Yeah, I heard that in the club it's last not, night. You know, it's so not. Good. Game I'm not Miami be playing it back to back to back, but. If that shit come on. Like, I mean, shit right. don't shit hate right. me, but I skipped I skipped that song when it when it come on because I don't feel like it's for me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> when I first heard it on the radio, and I was like, oh my gosh, Drake's album dropped, so I went and listened to it. But what really took that song over for me? It was cool at first, but then when SZA come on that, I was like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honey, that yeah, needed to be she, done. She did. Yeah, Drake Drake that. know what he doing, man. Because I, I I never thought that I would see a Drake and Yeet collab. Yeah, that's a um, that was a good one. But I was like, yo, it's this my fifteen year old's favorite song. Yeah, I mean, it's the most ignorant right. song on the album, yeah. but yeah. like, it sounds so good. You I gotta keep, tap into it, the youngest one. Drake, Drake yeah. smart man. Yeah, you know yeah. what he doing? He always wants to be smart though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. How you stay on um, top. He closed out his All Blur tour and he gave away a G wagon on his final show in Toronto. Hey man, paid off G wagon. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Man, first of all, who gonna pay for the maintenance? Y'all better sell that G wagon. <laughs> if you if you won that G wagon mm-hmm. at Drake concert, you better sell that G wagon to whatever dealership that he got it from. That's a pocket watch, that, ain't it? Watch. That that definitely is a that pocket watch, motherfucker. Because that maintenance, I don't even want to see what the oil change look like on that. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, see, you didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. You didn't yeah. think about the that. expenses that come with the free shit. <laughs> For sure, though. Like, that, you that's know. That's probably pretty expensive, though. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just wore a G Wagon at a, at a concert. One, one tire, shit. Tire pop. No, oh, man, tire pop. It's time to sell it. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> over. You, spend, you, spend you have expensive money. cars. You've ever you had a G Wagon before, right? I had no G Wagon. No. Okay. I just got a Maybach, though. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Don't want a tire to pop on that. Don't want a tire to pop. How much is oil change on the Maybach? Yeah. We don't know yet. I just got it. I had it for like two weeks. Oh, so we see. <laughs> he said, we gonna see. We gonna, we gonna see. see. Big baller. I'm a baller. It is time for the players ball. Uh-oh. Uh, football fan? Yeah. Falcons? Of course. Cool. Uh, the only 0-5 team left is the Carolina Panthers. They are 0-5. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Y'all got yes. number one. Yes. We, 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 you know, we had the number one pick. Anybody from too. Carolina in here? 
Uh, no, but okay, boy, oh boy, man. It sounds like they need to call Cam Newton back. Mm-hmm. Oh God, it sounds Cam. like they need to call well, Cam um, Newton back. Who the best team right now? Ain't it the uh, Miami Dolphins? The best team right now are the uh, for, the San Francisco 49ers. Mm-hmm. They're the undefeated team. Them and the Philadelphia Eagles are the only two undefeated teams left. Okay, mm-hmm. the 49ers just beat the Dallas Cowboys, who <laughs> apparently are not going to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't think they're going again. Damn, well, it's supposed again. to be tough this, this year. Kind of early in the year, but Dak Prescott been, is I proving been. that he's Fantastic. not. A clutch player. Mm. I'm just saying. He's Bring not him on the show. My eye test. Bring him on the show. Talk to him about. He ain't it. gonna come on the show. Yeah, he, ain't he don't want to talk to me. <laughs> he don't want to talk. He don't want to talk to me. All right, what that what that dude say on, on Instagram? Dallas Cowboy trash. trash. <laughs> I wonder what the Cowboys did to get his reputation. That everybody want to trash. Uh, him you know, the they time. just have a very rich owner. Mm-hmm. They have one of the nicest stadiums in the mm-hmm. in the country. Oh, so that's why. So yeah, mm-hmm. you know, the Dallas yeah. cheerleaders are like they always trending. They're always a trending thing. Is mm-hmm. usually Dallas and Houston that have like the cheerleader uh, fame. Yeah. Um. So you know that everything's bigger in Texas. That yeah. type of thing. So you know that's that's tr- that part true though. Their marketing is like <laughs> some of the best marketing. In the NFL, so it's a Dallas Cowboys. But they got a lot of they got a lot of talent, man. I was I was sad to see uh, Zeke, um, you know, leave and go. Yeah, he went to the Patriots. He was he plays for the Patriots now. And you know what the Patriots is? Yeah. Trash. Trash. Yeah, they trash. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they trash too. They it's trash. Because they yeah, tried to play bad. my boy Tom Brady like it was the coach. Ah. Uh, because they was winning, yeah. but it was really the talent. Yeah, for sure. Brady yeah. proved that. NBA is back. Mm-hmm. Preseason, the search go. Yep. Who, uh, how far are the Hawks going? We're going all the way, man. I'm standing on it. You know, I'm, you know, I'm riding with, I'm ride, you know, I'm ride with the Hawks all ride, the way too. I ride with the Hawks too, man. We just need a little help, bro. Yeah, we do need some help. How Thanks. we gonna get the help? Trey needs help, or he gonna leave us, man? How we gonna get the we help? Got Murray though. Murray. Yeah, we need more help. We need some big man. We need a, we yeah. need a superstar big man for sure. People don't want to play for Atlanta, bro. I, I, they should, I, I, though. I got I think a feeling it's, it's gonna distractions be, here. It's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna one of these years we gonna take off. Yeah, yeah. Well, we gonna, old as hell. Oh God. Well, well, you know we got Trey coming on the show <laughs> soon, so we gonna ask him, bro. Facts. Like the Atlanta time. Falcons gonna win the Super Bowl, I'm gonna be an old ass man, bro. I'm gonna be blowed, but I'm gonna be happy. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, nigga, why can we do this when I was in tw- my twenties? So I yeah. got that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You think that people? Well, I would say you think athletes. Are just afraid to like come to Atlanta. Yes, I think it's, it's a bad temptation. Influence. It's a bad influence they they on these athletes here, they down here, bro. For their career up. Yeah, bro. For real. You come out here, you in Atlanta. You want to be in the mix, and you. But you I know, Slick, you Houston's drunk, a you, bad influence. Look at look at James me? Harden. For sure. In Houston. Oh, I didn't think you know, about that. You feel like thing. Atlanta? A so little niggas were serious about their crowd. They probably like, I don't need to go to Atlanta. Well, Trey don't go out. But remember when Trey Fur got here? He was outside. Like he, was outside with, he was outside with us. Yeah. <laughs> Who took him to Waffy? You. You yeah. took him to Waffy. Yeah. Man, listen, so you, you need know. somebody like a LeBron who already has a family and already is uh, established. That's, that's still ain't gonna count. It's go. It's bad. It's Atlanta, so it's kind of like I think LeBron can come out here and, and, and be focused. But wait, you LeBron you know, be in the mix. Too. You know, you know what it is. I think that you from know, the beginning of his career, not to interrupt you. Ag had LeBron in the club in the beginning of his career. Well, go ahead. Yeah, but you know, I think. We can't say it's the culture, right? Because people go to Miami. What do you got with the blinkers, dude? Huh? Huh? People go to Miami and play. It's different in Atlanta, bro. We got like Miami built different. They football. They, that's a football. I just can't explain it, bro. Yeah. Like, but you know, they talk about the Miami Heat culture because um, I forgot what I was what I was watching on. It was like you ever notice that you never hear anything about any athlete in Miami. Well, I don't think Jimmy Butler never go to got club. out. But I think they do go out. I, I, no, talk about I, you ain't never heard nothing because it never had got Chad out. Chad Johnson, huh? Mm. Chad Johnson, Atlanta Black, Where? Yeah. Atlanta's Black when Hollywood. When he had uh, that scandal with Evelyn. Listen, bro, remember when Vic was the guy? Right. He was in TI videos. He was outside. He was outside. He never read the playbook. He <laughs> had grew his hair out. He got braids. <laughs> he was Save all the way left. He got the full. He was in the trouble. Uh, rubber band man video. Yeah, he was out. <laughs> and I'm like, nigga, you needed to be at practice. And that's yeah. my guy. That's my favorite player of all time. He's the reason why I love the, the fucking Falcons. I got the tattoo on my fucking hand. For sure, for sure. But I'm just saying, <laughs> Atlanta is just something. Atlanta. I don't want to talk about this. But dude. is Atlanta two turn? Yeah. Yeah. Is got, Atlanta two turn? You got members, especially so, not so here. Nigga ain't, ain't never been here. Like we got people like K Camp that just may randomly pop out. Future may randomly pop out. Atlanta is a city where superstars, not stars, 
A-list people will randomly you will fuck around and see Andre 3000 mm-hmm. in the club. But that's in LA. It. The dream. Yeah, but you know. LA built for that. LA is kind of built. Yeah, for that. that's their whole model. You just know that's this. what you're getting. Yeah, Atlanta, you sure. might be like, yo, this nigga is right here. Yeah, I'm yeah or you might go and somewhere he's like. a 10 piece lemon pepper right yeah, now. Yeah, and then he's telling you, like, we about to go do this. Come on. Oh, that's that is. There you know right what I'm saying? And in, in LA, LA everybody's kind of like, you know, everybody's kind of like clicked up. a little bit. Yeah. You know, in Atlanta, like, you could go yeah. somewhere and you would see somebody like K Camp and you like, hey. Lotto might be in that moment so, and she throw 30 bands. So needless to say, we're not gonna get anybody. No, I'm just I just have bad, you know, if we weren't supposed to we were supposed to win that Super Bowl them years back. Oh and God. we never won it. And oh I'm just hurt because who Jones that many is gone. That night. Man, I'm just, everybody's man, gone, that and that shit just made me depressed. So I just what, y'all, depressed. what y'all think about the uh, the new quarterback the Falcons have? I don't want to talk about it. Ain't gonna lie, Ryan been attention by it. I it. wonder why we didn't get Justin Fields. I wonder why Atlanta didn't didn't draft Justin. We didn't draft Fields. him because I feel like he got to get he got to get out of Chicago, man. He would, yeah, he would he would have been a perfect. Be because they, they try to the they try to tell him to yeah, stay. Well, I just want to know too how uh how's Dion doing? Dion Dion is good. Oh, Dion Sanders. They just won. They won. They're four and two, three and two, three. four and two. Four and two. Yeah, they yeah, four, yeah, and they four and so two. So who did he he lost to? Um, he, he lost to USC and they lost to Oregon. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. the two big and those those and are two tough teams. Arizona State. But you called that he was going to use. Yeah, I mean, I felt I felt like he still needs some big big boys. You know what I'm saying? But he got the skill players. Like he got the talent. And you see, Warren Sapp made that statement. Yeah, he just needs some dogs. Warren Sapp. He said it too. Warren Sapp is, is joining Dion next but year. But hey, that, look, that yeah. recruitment pool is already set for next year. Oh, yeah. They're going to be loaded. Yeah, they're going to be loaded next year. Yeah. He ain't even tripping. Yeah. They, That's yeah, why so, he said this is the yeah. worst we going to be. Yeah, facts. Mm-hmm. This is the worst we going to be. I think they'll be eight and four. Okay. Talking about finishing four, the season yeah. off? Yeah, yeah. They're going to win. They're going to win eight games. Very nice, guys. Baller alert. What's up? It's me, Flo, and you are now tuned in to the Baller Alert Show. Back with more of the Baller Alert Show. We got K-Camp in the building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, man, hey, man, I really thought about this. I've known you since, I want to say you was in high school, bro, or you just graduated high school. Probably just graduating. Yeah, because, like, I moved to Atlanta in 2009. Yeah, I just graduated. I graduated. Yeah, I just graduated high school, and I just was like, I just got introduced to you, and I just saw you in the studio working with with these guys, and, (laughs) of course, you always stood out. Um... And I really sat down and thought, I was like, damn, like, we've never really sat down in front of the cameras yeah. and had a real conversation. We have And we know so much about each other. For sure. So, well, we don't know. So for those let's, who let's, don't let's, know. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, we can't, let's, assume, let's we can't assume everybody knows, yes. you know. Okay. Er- Please so Just take us back yeah. a little bit. Introduce they came from yeah. where? Yeah, yeah. North side. The, the north side, Marietta, and, and of course in Atlanta, it's two north sides. The real north side. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Because you know, the, the Miko say no. The real one, though. We the, got the north side. We got the north, 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 north side. That's 85 north. You know what I'm saying? Mariachi, got, Texano, you know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. Club Cali. Now, Marietta. you are from the north side. Yeah. Cobb County. Yeah. Marietta. Marietta. And you saying it's the real, the real north side. We've been in the north side. before. I ain't going to lie. Before Migos even came out, we was claiming north. It was us, east, west, south. Then Migos came and putting off on it. Mm. Which is Gwinnett County. You know what I'm saying? And they popped on a global scale, so everybody thought that was the... You know. Now, What's your, what's your name again? Bo, he's uh, pointing to Bo in the yeah. corner over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to tell you. Yeah, we got to listen to yeah. fans. They be... So, uh, when did you start <laughs> rapping? Probably like eighth grade, going into ninth grade type <laughs> shit. That's what inspired you, that? Yeah. Uh, my family, you know what I'm saying? They come from a lot of music backgrounds. My uncle played the bass. My auntie sang. My grandma sang. Everybody was musically inclined. You know what I'm saying? My, my uncle to this day play in Vegas. He used to play for Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley. He used to play the piano in, at the casinos and shit. Um, so that shit just really fell in my lap, bro. I was playing ball first. You know what I'm saying? Basketball was get, my first you love. Hoop. Yep. Yeah, basketball was my first love. And my 12th grade year, summer league, I broke my ankle. You know what I'm saying? And you know how that shit go. Mm-hmm. I ain't had no plan B. Try to get into college, you know what I'm saying? My grades was terrible. Shout out my boy Dale, he helped me get into college. I really was at a two year, but I finessed everybody thinking I was at West Georgia, you know what I'm saying? I had my campus, my classes on West Georgia campus, but I was at a two year. You know what I'm saying? I used to commute 30 minutes every day. You know what I'm saying? But Wait, you um, used to just show up to uh No, I had classes on West Georgia campus, but my the the program I was in was I, a know, community college. You feel yeah, yeah, community yeah. college. Like, yep. I was finessing so hard I forgot the name of the community college. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was doing that. <laughs> oh my god. So you forgot the name uh, of You know that? Yeah, <laughs> now you do. <laughs> oh shit. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom. I dropped out of West Georgia probably like two months in. 
Um, you know, got my books stolen. I ain't had no money to get no more books. But didn't you have a, a group in high school, the HBC? HBC, Head, that was, yeah, he was part of it. Okay. <laughs> Too hot. Okay. Yeah. But, Can uh, we talk about that? Like, yeah, we just some young niggas outside fighting, mm. being bad, hooping, rapping. Did y'all perform any shows together? Did we perform shows together? We wasn't getting booked then. Okay. <laughs> y'all wasn't doing no talent shows or anything? No, nah, we wasn't doing no talent show, but we was definitely like, you know, outside in the, you know, I don't know if y'all know Southern Bread. Remember Southern Bread? Southern, Southern Bread. Southern Bread? Yeah. Yeah, so we just had the Southern parties Bread. and shit just turn, you know, on some y'all niggas So shit. did somebody make the beats in it and y'all said, we gonna just be a group? Yeah, we had we had, we had had a, 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 a guy in our group who had the studio and had all the beats. There's you know always somebody in the group with the studio. Yeah, he had all, he had all, the, <laughs> all the shit we needed, you know what I'm saying? But... Out of the whole group, I was the only one that really wanted to rap for real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody else did their own thing. I ain't gonna tell them what that what they was doing, but I like to rap. Now, when when did Do It come out? 2012. Okay, so what was anything happening before the Do It record? All night, fuck, all night. So we had you had all night. all night. Yeah, was that your first? That was my first record that popped in the city. That popped in the city. That got me shows. Okay. You know what I'm Paid saying? shows. Paid shows, $500, a little Ciroc bottle, you know what I'm saying? A little light shit around like the Alabamas and North Carolinas and okay. shit. We used to drive down there by Still ourselves. independent at the time? Yeah, yeah, no security. Me, him, my cameraman, we used to be in that bitch thugging, just uh, go perform, uh, get out this of there. This is K-Cat with the fro. Yeah. We used to be, man, come on, man, we had them times. That was really the times that made me for real. And mm. you yeah. were only, kind of like the only person from that area, correct me if I'm wrong, that really had a record like that going in other parts of town. For sure. We always broke. You know what I'm saying? I was just just living. You know what I'm saying? As young, we 18, 19. We just outside going to the club, going to parties. I used to throw parties. I used to have an entertainment group full of full of females. I called them, uh, it was, I had Perfect ENT. I had Lady Perfect. But that shit was, t- I ain't gonna lie, a female promo group was the worst thing ever. Them, <laughs> there was a lot of fights shit. going on. They don't listen to shit, but I, I had all the vibes. You know what I'm saying? I had the vibes going. So I used to throw parties. Anything just to get my name out there, you know what I'm saying? Just to just to keep the momentum going, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Trying to figure out a way to pop, you know what I'm saying? I was just in my mama basement recording every day, sister banging on the floor telling me shut the fuck up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit like that. I was just I was just hustling, bro, trying to figure it out. Did and you pay the girls the to time. go promote you? Yeah, they was with us all the time. Okay. Oh, they was like the street team also. Mm-hmm. There's a street team passing out the flyers. I used to hear the house parties. I, I was I was the vibe. And I this was cool all on the north time. side. Yeah. yeah. Now, We've been cool for a minute. We've been cool for a minute. Now, <laughs> when, when, I want you to break down Do It. Yeah. Did you create that song first? Was that your beat? Because you did the hook. That was Bobby Beat. Bobby Critical. I recorded that in my mom's basement. So Bobby Critical made the beat. Yeah. Um, how long have you known Bobby Critical real quick? 10 plus. Okay. So Bobby Critical gave you that beat. You did the hook. I did the hook. How I, did, I did arranged get, the song. You arranged the song. How did it? Michael pulled up to my mom's house. Okay. You know? You and Michael were friends, or you just was like, yo? We was cool, you know what I'm saying? We met we met Michael through, you know what I'm saying? Because he used to be with Walker and them. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Walker and them, Chaz, you know what I'm saying? R.P. Dunk, all them niggas used to come to the north side all the time. You know what I'm saying? They used to be in the club. We used to be mariachi. You know, it was, it was during that time, that was, you know what I'm saying, Red red Train. I don't know if y'all are familiar with all this shit, but niggas used to always come to the north side to perform at over Mike with Sean Teasy and all that shit mm-hmm. back in the day. One time for Sean Teasy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Throw back, throw back, throw back. But so I met Michael through them, you know. He came through one time and, you know, just a regular studio session. It wasn't nothing planned out, you know. You what I'm saying? gave him that song pretty much. You did you say, hey, I have this this hook I did. You I was just in there, you know. So I had the booth, I had the booth in the room. So what, went, how, did, how did that happen? It. You just said, okay, you can have it this was, song. I, I believe it was his beat. It had to be his beat. Okay, because it, it had to be a reason why it was his song. Because it, gotcha. it had to be his beat. Okay, you know gotcha. what I'm saying? But, you know, I had packs of beats from Bobby because that was my producer at that time. You know what I'm saying? With was, the hook already on it? No. It wasn't no hook on, hook on the beat. Okay. He came through with a beat. Okay. Okay. And okay. 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 I recorded Got it. it. Got it. And I'm the one who cut the cut the beat when it went acapella and then mm-hmm. dropped. You know what I'm saying? The whole yeah, format. I'm, 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 I was the one. Dude, and, he, and he was just like, all right, but, appreciate but it, it, man. Yeah, it was his, <laughs> but at the time I was pushing, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was pushing a, um, a project. I think it was like Become a Fan. It was one of my old mixtapes. And I don't know if y'all remember, y'all probably don't remember, but it's old oh shit. Miss River City. Miss River City. Damn, dog. I've been taking it back. You feel me? But she used to be the plug, like pushing records back in the day. Like, yeah. you had your DJs, I was breaking records, but yeah. she was pushing shit online and giving everybody an online presence. So I gave her, I had a song called Make That Money with Stewie Rock. Mm-hmm. And I had and I had to do it. And I gave her them too. I gave her probably like $100, $200, my last, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to drop a mixtape, just, you know what I'm saying? And when I gave her them records, do it was the one that caught. Mm-hmm. And next thing Dude, you know, it caught it caught for real though. Like it caught, that shit, you know what I'm national. saying? Mm-hmm. It caught. I'm glad you, know you kind of sang it for the 
audience Man, so they can. I want you do it. Yeah, you feel do me? It. Ooh. And she still go off at do my it. show. Yeah. That's, yeah, that song still get played you know in the saying? club. Exactly. So, how, how old is that song? That shit came out in 2012, bro. So it's, mm-hmm. yeah, I was at the radio station. 11 years. Yeah. 11 years old. Ain't that a fucking thing? Nah. Now, was there ever a moment in the song where, because I want to ask you this question. Okay. Was there ever a moment in the song where you guys had were at odds yeah, about it? when it popped. It was just one of them things. Like I was broke. You know what I'm saying? We all was broke. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And I felt like I played a major role in getting that song out, okay. formatting, creating a song. I make hit records. I, to this day, I still do it. So mm-hmm. the proof in the pudding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when everybody found out it was Michael's song, he took it and ran with it, started getting shows, started, you know what I'm saying, leaving me out, not bringing me to the shows. Mm-hmm. In the video, if you go watch the video, I'm barely in the video. You know, they were just capping me down the whole the whole time. And I remember one time, I'll never forget that moment. Um, who was at Artist Factory. Uh, I think it's called Artist Factory. Yeah, story. Artist Factory. Yep. Yeah, Artist yeah. Factory. I ain't been there so long. I want to say I'm, I met you there. Yeah. I met you at uh, probably at 14th Street, booting them shit. Oh, Acon and shit. Yeah, yeah, Acon and um, shit. Um, we was there and we was with his, his manager. Uh, I ain't gonna say his name. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Cool, 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 like, cool. You know what I'm saying? But we was we was at the thing and um and my, my mama was with me and he was just sitting there counting like uh Michael contracts at the time and just saying how much he was getting paid each show. And I'm just adding up in my head like, and I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, nigga, I made the fucking song. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the moments you like that and I just. It just became that, and we just kind of just grew apart, you know. So I wasn't feeling it. He was just doing. I his only thing. asked you that because I wanted to ask you: Did that motivate you to, of course, bigger? Of records? course, that was 2012, 2013. I came with Money Baby and cut off at of fourteen. Period. Woo! But and it also goes to show because <laughs> it also goes to show who was the real creative behind it because you dropped multiple hits after that, mm-hmm. and then how many did he have after? That's how it worked, though. You know, yeah. that's right. how it happens in this game. I've just seen it with YC in I got the future. love for Michael, though. Yeah, yes. and, I, and I was, yes. I was thinking example. about that, too. You know uh, that happened. that happened right before us. Yeah. So I seen it happen. I was like, damn, I'm about to get, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. I felt like, oh, and it, it turned around. You know what I'm saying? Money Baby was a really big record for you, bro. Yeah, it was a smash. It's, one, it's still one of my all-time favorite Appreciate it. records. I still play it to this day. You know what, you know what I hate, though? I'm glad you brought it up. Why? I hate going to these clubs. Why? They still be playing the records. Why? I hate it. I hate you hate hearing your old shit? Nah, I don't hate hearing my own shit. I hate hearing old shit. You want to hear oh, okay. new stuff? I didn't put out too shit. many records since then. You know what I'm saying? The Wolves yeah. is what's like, I didn't put out too many. You know what I'm saying? Even it's Steven histor- Spinner Block. It's a historical aspect. Yeah. Artists, I feel that though from you all standpoint, but yeah. I'm in the club from, trying from to get my artist. new shit off. Facts. And they playing Cut Off and Money Baby like, we got kept in a bit. Man, come on with that. That is true. That is true. I hate that shit. But you, you gotta know, understand they know. the fans. The fans love it. That's but I think cool a lot. Of, but I think a lot of artists are like that because you do get artists mm-hmm. when they come in the club and you like as a fan, you're playing music that you know everybody else right. loves. And I For think sure. where artists, they're like, man, I, cause it's kind of like hearing about your ex girlfriend. Right? Every day you go. Every day, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So. Yeah. I be want, I was gonna make an announcement on the, on the, on the, on the Instagram. <laughs> no, all we do, all we do, you, you call gonna, me and then we have no, a, a nice. Then you can make the announcement yeah, make right the announcement. here. Go ahead. I just did. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> what is it? I just did. What was it? Stop playing my old stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Play my new shit in the club. I and mean, first, you can play my old shit while I'm never get my new shit off. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing you do. It just, it just make you feel like you're still in the past, so you're stuck in the past. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm selling out tours, I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? My yeah. shit moving in the present. You know what, what I'm saying? But what about the build up? Hey, I'm not to bang too much. I'm you sorry. What, what, you good, you good. You what, see what, the frustration. What, 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 what about the. <laughs> but that's a valid emotion because a lot of artists, like you said, you know, when they come in, you automatically playing something. That's just like if. Well, it wouldn't happen to Beyonce because she got so many new records that's on radio and stuff like that. But, you know, just to understand, like, when people come in the club or if TLC come in, you know they playing No Scrubs yeah, or yeah, something sure. like that. But I, I know from an artist standpoint, they look at their song as, like, X is like, okay, I'm 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 over this X. Like, I don't want to hear this. But I think from, like, you know, uh, me hosting parties and Ferrari DJing, I think from, like, you know, from a crowd perspective and, and you know, just being a fan, I think it's the build up. Cause it's like you want to come in and hear your new record. Hey, everybody don't do the build up. Oh. This is true too. Some folks do the build up. Okay. Some people, you know what I'm saying? Do, yes. okay. Shout out to Bluetooth. Something. He got a great build up. What type of Bluetooth? Yeah, okay. What type Bluetooth of Bluetooth? Crazy, uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? A lot of DJs don't do the build up. They just play them and just I just do yeah. think we should do a better job at communicating, not necessarily for you, but 
we know who's who because two chains can come in the club and want to hear his old shit. Yeah, K Camp may mm. not. And and that's and that's just based on relationships. And you got to know the you artist. Know that, the artist. Exactly. I know that's for true. a fact two chains will want to hear some of his old shit mm -hmm. and his new shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Camp may want to hear his new shit and then shit. You could go crazy. Yeah, I don't mind y'all sprinkle money, baby. That shit cool. It, it turn. It still get. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But that's also you being tapped in too. You got yeah. Be you got to be tapped exactly. in with what's so going on. But you got to also with. understand a lot of DJs aren't privileged. You know, to get a chance to know a K camp or get a chance to know a two chain. So I just always try to tell people, um, you know, to to definitely communicate with the artists and or or even a team. Like, yeah. you know, when somebody come in, don't just expect because some artists would be like, I don't want to hear my music at all. True, that too. They but won't I be love, low. I love your perspective, BT, because you know sometimes you got to remind the crowd of who it is. You yeah. know, versus just plant putting something new on. Yeah, for sure. They kind of got to get excited, like, like, oh, oh my gosh, I, I know. Mm -hmm. And then they get into it. Then, like you said, play the new stuff too. Yeah, for sure. Now, I do want to get back to it because you. You had a pivotal song to me, which I think was one of your most pivotal songs, which was Cut Her Off. Mm -hmm. And that came at a time when clubs in Atlanta was clubs. Yeah. Um, it, with dance floors. For sure. And um, it's a song that everyone can say, you always got to cut a motherfucker off. Yeah, for sure. So it was a very trendy but long-standing song. Uh, and I remember working at the radio and I came in, I was I was an intern on DJ Holiday Show and I said, yo, this is a cat named K-Camp. He got this song, Cut mm -hmm. Her Off. This shit is a fucking hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did you record that? How did you record that? What was your vibe? Uh, did you think it was a hit? Nah, I was just, I was just vibing. Right. I was just expressing myself that day. You know what I'm saying? I you was just playing around. I, yeah, I was loaded. I was, I was a little drunk. And um, <laughs> I tell a story. I, I ain't told the story in a minute, but you know what I'm saying? I had, I had a little plate that I was supposed to pull up, and um, she, she didn't pull up, and she was supposed to go get the lima readers from the store. You know what I'm saying? Get right, get at it. I was just in the studio recording. You know what I'm saying? Just vibe, not a regular day. And um, she kept just capping, just just doing lame shit. And I was like, man, you might watch your uh. So I just went in the booth. I was already drunk. And I put the beat on the first thing I said. It ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. And I just kept saying it. And I just started <laughs> rapping. And then I packaged it up. And I think I, um, who the fuck I gave that song to? I think it was cut, though. It was somebody, bro. Because I was always just send my shit out. And the shit hit a mixtape and just, phew. You would text your records out too. You'll just be you'll you feel just text me. The shit. I did that with lottery. Yeah, I was on a plane. I sent lottery off to like sixty people. Wow, sixty influencers and tastemakers. I knew wow. that you know what I'm saying had an ear in that, in that shit. That's a dope ass story. You feel Speaking me? Speaking of lottery, how was how did you feel when it became viral on TikTok? And it went viral. It went it went left a little bit. And it then almost I was, did. It was dope I brought how it back you carried to life. it. I brought it back to life. You brought it back to life. You took care of the yeah, Jalea. Jalea, who made Jalea. the dance? Who made the dance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was crazy how that how that came about though. You know, so you know that's one of Pat, certified Pat. Yep. Mm -hmm. One of his closest friends, daughter. Didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that's how that's world. how that's how it happened. That dance so was he crazy. Said, he too. said, he said, Count boy, you know that's my, my friend from college daughter. I said, What? I said, bring us to the studio. It's like around Valentine's Day. I got some bears, I got like like merch, and I brought them to the studio. And I looked, that's that clip that went viral. They were dancing in my studio. That's dope. I just well, took advantage of the moment because I knew yes. it could have went left. I was like, not on Bro, my watch. It went viral for just the beginning of the song. For sure, for sure. It was just straight, straight beat. Mm -hmm. For sure. Doom, 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 I remember that doom, day. Doom, that, doom, I heard doom. the beat. And then you come in. I heard that beat in New York. I was on tour when I made that song. I recorded at least Key Studio. Hmm. What's the process when you making these songs? Have fun. This ain't no secret. This mm. Ain't no. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go off true emotion, like whatever you feeling. Say that shit. Cause somebody feeling that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, fresh ahead that day, had some money on me, cash on me. Like, I, <laughs> the fuck, it ain't hard. Hey, you can't be trying to make it sound so easy. But it's that <laughs> simple, though. But you got to have good cadence. You got to have good flow. You got to have a good tone. You know what I'm saying? Of course, talent. You got to have talent. But the the process of making a song, if you in tune with your true emotion and how you feel, it's not that hard, bro. That's mm -hmm. how I have these artists even pop because they're making a song how they feel and that shit end up going worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that uh, affect your career? Because I feel like, you know, from the money baby, comfortable, cut her off, you know, yeah, all the way. Comfortable. Me Fine. too. Yeah. All the way to Bangers. lottery. Where were you during, during that it Before lottery? Yeah, before lottery. I was in L.A. You did leave us and move to L.A. Why did you, you leave want, us? You want to know why? Yes, please. I got blackballed. Mm. You got blackballed? What year? 2016. The same year comfortable when it came out. How'd you get blackballed? My manager. Cause you were just on Double XL in mm -hmm. the freshman cover in 2015. Mm -hmm. So you're speaking saying of, speaking of Sweet Lounge, it happened at Sweet Lounge. It happened at what happened at Sweet Lounge? I had an album release at um, Sweet, Sweet Lounge. Lounge. Boom, and uh, you know my manager at the time. Yes, 
You know, it's crazy. We recently just, yeah. I don't want to say got cool, but we, 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 Made him we don't talk to That's yeah. actually my guy, but go ahead. It's I okay. Bet it is. It's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We on talking terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how can we get some money together and put shit in the past? You know what I'm saying? We both right, successful. Right, right. Mm-hmm. We doing our thing now. Yeah. Um, It was a lot of DJs in the building that night. It was a lot of, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? A lot of people in the building that night. And, you know, I was what, 20, 22, 20, I was a young nigga. You know what I'm saying? I come to the release party drunk as hell. With my, we mm-hmm. drunk as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on stage. We just playing the music, just doing regular album release shit. So he come around and say, I got Plex. You know, I mm-hmm. man, right, just be right, doing that right. shit with their artists. You know what right. I'm saying? So I'm like, he like, shit. I'm like, who the fuck did he, who did he go to? He like, shit, the name right there. So I'm just, hey, so-and-so, get your Plex. You know what I'm saying? It was like four or five of them. You know what I'm saying? The night went on, boom, boom, gave the Plex out. Didn't think nothing of it. The next day or the two days later, I'm in the studio, just in the studio. I get a text from my boy Iceberg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he like, didn't, he didn't he like I'm at the, no, no, he, he didn't say that. He was like, bro, I'm at the radio station and it ain't looking too good for you right now. What the fuck you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, mind you, I'm hot right now. I'm just, I'm shit going. I'm like, fuck I do. You feel me? He was like, some shit about some plaques. I was like, plaques? What you mean, plaques? So that one move that happened at my album release party, Almost derailed my whole career. Mm-hmm. So, with that plaque shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, I was I, I was still outside going into the club in the mix and shit. So, every time I went somewhere and talking to DJs that I've been knowing for 10 years, seeing these niggas since I was 18 going in the clubs, everybody giving me weird vibes. Mm. I'm shaking niggas' hands and making the same energy. I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Something going on for real. Mm-hmm. So, just, 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 just me being me, I was like, shit, y'all wanna go to LA? <laughs> That's how that's Wait, so because some D, you didn't give all the DJs plaques. I didn't get all the DJs. Everybody who felt like they broke a record. You okay. know what I'm saying? Everybody feel like they break a record. If you, if you in a club, you're going to feel like you broke that yeah. record. Yeah. But if it's uh, 150 DJs in the city, who going to pay for 150 plaques? Mm. And plaques Because the labels cheap. definitely ain't going to pay for them. Right. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? But you shouldn't, you know shouldn't be the, giving out, giving you know out no plaques. It ain't, that that's ain't really a label job to, 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 to yeah, satisfy. A, you know what I'm saying? That's That come with the service. Like, you got to. So it was just one of them things like everybody, you know, not everybody, but a certain amount of DJs felt away. And I guess they didn't want to press play on my music and I mm-hmm. felt it. So I just left. So what made you, and now you went to LA, what made went you to LA, want to come had back? Had a time of my life. <laughs> what happened in LA? <laughs> we just turned. Just he, he, Did listen, you get married loved, there or something? What happened? No, nah, I stayed four houses down from Walt Disney though. Okay. He, he loves LA. Every time I go to LA, I always run into K Camp. What I don't was the like vibe? It as much as I used to. I feel like we burnt that bitch down. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 music did you what music came out of LA? Yeah. As far as hit records, no hit records came out of LA. Yeah, mm. you was too busy partying. I was partying. I ain't gonna lie, I was still working. Don't get it twisted. I always work. Right, right, right. But I was just I was just all the hard work I put in, I was like shit, I'm about to live. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm okay. about to just enjoy this shit. Just, how long you was just this? Just like the last song. You, you was comfortable. Me? I was comfortable. How long was this? That I was in LA? Yeah. I was there a year and a half. Okay. Before you came back to Atlanta, what was your mental like? Yeah. How was you how were you mentally? At the time, I'm be I'm oh, I'm be, be a thousand. I didn't care, mm. you know what I'm saying? I was like shit, niggas ain't fucking with you me. You had that like, money. It wasn't even about the money. Like y'all ain't fucking with me. Oh, oh well, you know what I'm saying? Got like, you. Got I you. wasn't too consumed in the music shit. Like I was making music, but that wasn't my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I made enough money just to chill. Like shit, okay, shit. If this the end, it's the end. But that wasn't really the goal for me. You know what I'm saying? I really that's how you was thinking. Not it, the end, but like if these niggas ain't fucking with me no more, this is my city shit. What I'm gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like if, it's a, if they, that's how they feeling, because gotcha. I don't know what to do to fix the shit. Because I'm not about to buy a thousand plaques. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was just my, I was young. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's where I was at with it. What made you want to come back to Atlanta? Like I was losing steam. I, I felt it. Okay. Mm. I felt it. I felt okay. like I that's wasn't big it. of you to admit that. Yeah, that, that is I, big. One thing about me, bro. You know what I'm saying? All jokes aside, I'm a man that look in the mirror and, and accept all my flaws and, and and put my flaws on the table and try to work on all my. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, every day I'm trying to work on be, being a better being a better man, be, yeah, a better right. man, better. You know what I'm saying? Bro, everything that come with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not scared to look myself in the mirror. I'm true to myself. I'm true to my core. I understand myself. I know what make me upset. I know I know all about myself. I'm still learning, but I'm not that type of nigga who just be like, ah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Take take a mask off when I go home. The way I am now, it's how I am when I go. You know what I'm saying? Say good night when I wake up. Every day, you feel me? So, boom! I realized I was falling off. You know, not not necessarily falling off, but I was I losing. You was my losing momentum. momentum. Yeah, twenty one was coming up at the time. This is the same time twenty one dropped Savage Mode with Metro. Boom! It was it was a whole new wave. Mm-hmm. One thing about me, I could see what's going on. I'm an A and R as well as an artist. I know what the fuck going on. I know what's popping. I know. Yeah, I watch it. 
Thug is around. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's all it's all that going all on. That, but Thug was already going when I was going. Me, me, goes Thug. We was all in the true. same, like, you know true. what I'm saying? That's true. Um, but I, 21 was coming up because he was over there at Sunny Spot. Sunny was working with uh, 21 first. I got a song with 21 before, 21 before he popped. If y'all go listen, he got a song called One Foot In, One Foot Out. I was on the remix, but we never dropped it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up coming up, and I was like, ooh, a whole new way about to hit him. You know what I'm saying? This shit about to switch. Mm-hmm. And me and Jeans, you know what I'm saying? Me and Jeans be plotting and all on that type what of time. What time DJ Jeans? We just seen the shift. And at the time, we was slum lords. We was slum. Remember slum lords? That's Damn. when we had the slum, slum anthem, all that shit. We was on slum wild. Slum anthem was fire. We was on wild nigga shit. We were just, you know what I'm saying? Fucking hoes and just partying and drinking and just having fun. That's That was the whole slum motto. And I remember I told Jeans, I said, bro, if we're going to be in this shit for real, we got to change the whole brand, bro. Like, we can't be... We getting older. We can't be fucking hoes and saying this shit. Grown hoes don't want to see this shit. This shit not cool no more. You know what I'm saying? So the plot was rebrand. You know what I'm saying? It took us about a month to rebrand. I'm on, I'm on dictionary.com, the, uh, the SARS, trying to find words that just match my brand. And Rare popped up. Rare. Rare popped up. That was I just a great felt, idea. I felt like I was just a rare, you know what I'm saying, piece in the game that, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't too exposed. I wasn't too underexposed. I was just in it. I made, everybody knew me from my, you know what I'm saying, I was a rare, like, interesting little gym in the game. Mm-hmm. So, rare was it was was it, was it what we ran with, and we came back to, you know what I'm saying, Atlanta, like around 2017, 18, in the 18, I had got a new crib out there in Atlanta. Uh, I don't know if y'all been to my, one of my parties. We was at Robin Hood, the Glass House. I don't know if y'all ever came. That shit was low. Nah, I know, a, I know a bunch of girls that have been there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we had that bit piped up. You know what I'm saying? My whole, my whole thing was, see, if they not fucking with me on the music side right now, I'm going to make sure they still fucking with me on the culture side. Right. I'm going to still keep the motion. I'm going to keep the vibes going because we had the parties going to L.A. And I, I, I came up throwing parties. I knew the, I knew the formula. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we're going to just throw fire at parties. And I'm going to record and just play my shit at my parties. And whatever catch, we're going to take that bitch to the club. That's when Racks Like This came out. Racks Like This. But Racks Like This, she went on yeah, to turn yeah, We was yeah. at our party, turned to that motherfucker. All the whole, yeah. love, we was, you know what I'm saying? So we knew we had something. That's when we was campaigning. But that was the transition. But I skipped a few little little, little spots. But we That's came good. back to Atlanta, and I dropped the Rare Project. That was with Nard and B. Nard it B. was a collab project with Nard and B. You know what I'm saying? That, that was started. It, it was Rare. Then it turned into Rare Sound. Then that formed the whole label, and then mm-hmm. that's where I've been going ever since. So earlier this year, uh, you signed an independent partnership with TikTok Music mm-hmm. Distribution. Is that with Rare Sound? Yeah. So it's How partnered that? with Rare. Partner, partner with me. Well, I am Rare Sound, so yeah. For the distribution of it. Yeah. So how does how how did that deal come about? I was at I was at my studio. I was I forgot what project I was working on, and I ain't gonna say his name because I ain't really feeling him right now either. But he had told me. <laughs> He had told me um, to come to a... No, he had said, I got XYZ at the studio. They waiting on you to pull up. But he never confirmed the session with me. So he told these, you know what I'm saying, producers I was pulling up, but I, he never told me that this was confirmed. So I'm like, bro, why you book it? You know what I'm saying? So I went to the studio already mad as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Then he take my shades off. And I, and I went in the booth and recorded some crazy shit too. They was like, this nigga's nuts. I ain't even take my... I went that bitch and, man, did a fire ass song, right? So while I'm in the studio, it was this random, this random dude in the studio that just kept fucking talking. He kept talking, kept talking. Didn't know this nigga for shit. He just kept talking. <laughs> Bo must have been there. <laughs> kept, kept, kept talking. But he was, he was, a, he was a fan of my work, and he was telling me like, you know, you know, what I'm saying, you know, if somebody say something about a song, you be like, how the fuck, you know that song? You know what I'm saying? Because the masses only know a certain amount of yeah. records. Right. But niggas who say like deep cuts, you be like, oh okay, you you tuned in for real. Mm-hmm. So he he said one, he said something like that one time. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, this nigga cool. You know what I'm saying? You can talk. <laughs> Let him talk. He said he can talk. Let, <laughs> Let him talk some more. Long story short, I got his number. I said, y'all got a studio right on the street. You know what I'm saying? Just pull up and hear some records and shit. Because I was playing him. It was Float album. No, it was, it was Vibe Forever album. I was playing him songs before the album dropped. And he was critiquing it. And I was like, shit, come to the studio and come critique some more shit. Long story short, uh, his name is Notch. I don't know if y'all know Notch. Maybe. He used to work for LVR and he'll be at TikTok. Okay. Anyway. You know what I'm saying? During that time, uh, he, he was leaving. Right. He was leaving LBRN. And um, he was like, yeah, I'm just trying to find somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? New situation, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know what I'm saying? TikTok interested. And I was like, nigga, go over there and do that. You know what I'm saying? Why not? That's where it's at right now. Mm-hmm. So he ended up getting a job. And we just, you know what I'm saying? Made a play. Locked in. Made a play. Mm-hmm. Just like that. How does that work for your music now? What do they do for you? Like, how does that work when you make a song? TikTok or just... With TikTok, how does... How does the distribution work for your music? It's just a regular distribution deal. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You, you agree to certain terms and 
they put it out. You don't have a secret button that, um, that they press over there and they said this that's is what I was hoping for. <laughs> they said this is <laughs> that, that what I was hoping for. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> <laughs> but what does it? What is a regular distribution deal for people who don't know? It depends on your leverage. You know, they they they. Is it, what do you mean by that? Like, how does it work? Do they just put? You, do they put your song on all the radio stations? Do they see? No, you just play DSPs. A distribution company is, you know what I'm saying, they just put your shit on DSPs. You know what I'm saying? And what is that? Apple Music, Spotify, all the platforms where you listen to music at. Oh, digital digital platform. Digital digital platform, you know what I'm saying? Um, Do they boost it in any way? Of course, you can have digital campaigns. You can have, you know what I'm saying, different... it depends on what you what you what, what they offer and what you you know what I'm saying it's all about negotiation. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's shit is different. That's why I can't really speak on everybody's stuff. But certain companies like TikTok, you would expect they they got a, a crazy platform so they can easily just press a button. And your shit turn up. That shit turn up. Mm-hmm. But it don't always work like that. Mm. They need to start marketing like that because everybody was signed with TikTok if they said we got a secret. Because I never button. heard yeah. of this type of deal. I've never no, heard of this type they, of deal. They, they, they don't have no secret button. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they still, they still, they still got to pay all these influencers to do all this type of shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? She still got to catch. Yep. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They can, they can put your shit in front of, on the front page and do like, gotcha. a, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Uh, uh, song is, you know what I'm saying? They can do what they do because it's their platform, but shit got to still catch. The distro kid and TikTok is kind of similar. They just, you just turn your music in shit, and they just, put it on the all the shit, bro. You've had a really dope path in your career. Think so? Um, yeah. It's been tough on my end. But do you feel underrated? <laughs> of course. As an artist? I'm undefeated now. I don't go with that underrated shit no more. Okay. I go I go with undefeated. But as far as like on a on a large scale, if you want to put it in that aspect. Um somewhat. But I ain't really going for that phrase no more. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But I play I play a role in that though. I can't necessarily just say everybody say I'm underrated. I play a role in that. I don't do too much. If I was loud, if I was in the camera just making all this noise. If I was in the blogs for bullshit, they wouldn't call me underrated. But eh, I keep it. Pee. So do you I like stand. not? You I like, like being I like the way I do my. Yeah, I like I like I like the private. way I move, man. Okay. I like the way I move. It's been working for me. Okay. <laughs> I can't complain. You my brother, dog. But I gotta get in your business, man. All right, bro, let's go. Is K Camp in a relationship? No. Well, the last time we talked to him, he said he had just broken up with his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When we that? was at when we was at the BT uh, Awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> that 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 was my last. Boom. All right, <laughs> that was my last relationship. What happened? She happened. <laughs> <laughs> so K Camp single. Why is K Camp single? It's by choice. Okay. Um, I can get into a relationship right now. I can send a text like, "You want to be my girlfriend?" They are gonna say yes. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna say yes. All uh, caps. <laughs> Would you ever get married? Um, kids, definitely kids. I consider getting married, but it's, it's tricky, man. This gen- you know how this generation is right now. It's kind of no yeah, kids right now. If you ain't got right? one, nah, I ain't got no kids. If you ain't got no, if you ain't got no solid partner that's that you're considering marriage with right now that you've been locked in with for X amount of years, it's kind of scary at that point. What mm-hmm. is your views on the dating pool right now? Like you said, this generation is kind of crazy. It's fucked up. Why do you think that? You got niggas like me making music, Future making music, uh, everybody who making toxic ass <laughs> music. And so you just get toxic Washington. women, you attract that? I do. Mm. I do. I, I, I attract some good women though, but I don't know how to keep them. Mm. Oh. Because I'm like, but I'm a good nigga though. Well, why, <laughs> why, why, why you can't you keep can't the keep good them? girls? Because I'm so like, I, did, I, I, I think I just had this conversation the other day, man. It's like, with me, I get bored quick. Um... And I need inspiration to make this music. And if you ain't inspiring me, I kind of be like, eh. and I probably try so to. If you ain't toxic, to, you, you don't get inspired. To, it ain't always got to be toxic because I, I make a lot of songs about good girls too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I make great songs about good girls. Comfortable was a yeah, uh, I know good girl yeah. record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cut her off was a toxic record. You know, yeah. so it's a balance. But it's just like I be trying. It just it, either they do something that just just don't they don't match energy. Um, Time expire, you know what I'm saying? Everything got its season. Are you not willing to compromise, my brother? I always do. Okay. Okay. So what Too a, damn much. What about, so before, the day before, I believe it's the day before you came to the uh, war show, we interviewed you. I believe you just posted the girl. I did. I did. That's And then when we interviewed That's you. That's <laughs> And then we interviewed you, you said it's over. Y'all just broke up. You know what I'm saying? so it, casual with it too, though. Yeah. Y'all still talk? 
Nah, but she just texted me like last week, talking about she's sorry and all this shit. Oh. Yeah, you gonna take her back? You gonna spin the block? No. When's the last time y'all spun the block with each other? No. Why not? I just watched a clip on Instagram. I had to DM this lady too, cause she said some real ass shit. It just randomly popped up my page. She said something like, um, it was about why men fall for women, right? I, it said something like, men fall for women that's great nurturers. You know what I'm saying? When they feel like, you know, when I, I I'm, I'm breaking down like this. I went to Houston. This is my second time going to Houston to, to, to work on my album, to finish mixing, right? I went to Houston to work on my album. I ain't, I ain't called nobody and let nobody know I was in Houston. I was just in the studio locked in, right? So when I'm in the studio, I'm like, who who stay out here? Like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in music mode. So I'm like, who sing? Because she could sing her ass off. Mm -hmm. So I brought her to the studio to sing. And then we were just in that bitch vibing. You know what I'm saying? And then one thing led to another. I'm at the crib. I'm getting facials, bat rubs, breakfast sandwiches with the parsley on Ooh. it. Feet rub, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, you feel me? And you I ain't had that, I ain't had that treatment in about a year, so, so I'm like, one. I'm gone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's saying, I'm like, oh, I'm about to man, have me a Beyonce. We good, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm about to take Beyonce, yeah. that motherfucker. You feel me? That's that's what I was thinking, and I just jumped in way too fast. Okay, got you. We both jumped in way too okay. fast, mm -hmm. and then we really found out about who each other and who each other was, and kind of like. He's saying that shit was crazy. Because did all that stop after a while? I wouldn't say it stopped, but the other shit started. So that okay. stopped. Mm. And what was the other shit? I'm not trying to go all the way into it. It was just... I'm just trying to highlight the like insecurities. Maybe. Okay. Mm. I'm there K. Kemp still. Oh. If I'm at your crib, I'm Chris, and I'm chilling, watching TV, smoking, vibing. But when I'm at work, I'm still who I am. And she came, she was came to one of my shows. And You got a lot of female fans. Come on, they own me. They, they, they touching, they, they want me. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> That was uncomfortable she couldn't, for her. She couldn't handle that. And yeah. then I actually, I brought her to another one and I didn't let nobody touch me. I didn't jump in the crowd. I, I was away from him. And she still had a problem. Okay. She got mad because a waitress touched my arm and asked me. Oh, okay. And that, it, was just, it was just too much like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, I just met you for real. That was real toxic. Was too much stress in my yeah, life. Yeah, like, toxic shit. I already got enough going on. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like funny, some fatal attraction shit. You feel me? Okay. It could have went there. Yeah, very unhealthy. You know what got I'm it. saying? So I, for my for my sanity and my health, I just like I gotta I gotta I gotta get the fuck out. Good job, of this my shit. brother. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Stay strong, yeah, King. Got up out of this. Stay strong. So what are you looking for now? If you are nothing. <laughs> I'm looking for that PTSD. I'm looking. I'm looking to put this album out. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's I'm, talk about it. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking to put this album out independently. You know what I'm saying? I put I put the spin we we put the spin the block album out independently and it did well. Spin the block came out that, and um we just recently got it clear. We about to go radio. But you're not spinning the block. On her, no. Um, spinning the block on these funyuns and these minions. But um, <laughs> bro, I did not know K Count money. was this funny, bro. Yeah, I'm funny as fuck. <laughs> Been funny, but this shit ain't funny. But anyway, no, nah, that's 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 I my know main tours focus. Tours and the uh, works coming up, right? I just did two tours this year. I know, but yeah. you stay on Talk tour, so yeah, I was just I was just bro, foreseeing stay, the future. You stay booked, and you just. I mean, you know, I don't think artists brag, but artists inform. No, yeah. artists definitely brag. Artists it's kind of like a brag. both thing. You really kind of just be on some cool shit. I be chilling. You bro. don't really, you know. Why would I brag? I it's what I, it's my job. It's Sometimes I, I want you to, bro, because everybody want me to. Only because I just feel like you're like this light that just, you know, you don't care that you're a light, but people need yeah. to see the light. This is I don't care. You know why I don't care? I got this so dirty in this shit. It took all the love. Cause you I, had some bad deals. I, I got, I got did dirty. I, I had to climb out the mud to you get had this some shit back on. My bad. You had some very bad deals. Yeah, for sure. So it's like it took the love out of me. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the industry, so now I'm just doing it for for us. For 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 you know what I'm saying? It's just the, I'm not. I, I don't look at it as like, oh, I rap. I'm I'm lit, but fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make sure my mama good, my sister good, everybody. Sometimes, one time for Mama Camp. Yeah, shout out Mama Camp. You know we got Camps giving coming up. She you know does Camps giving. Make she sure y'all come out every year. Celebrity basketball game. That's dope that she does that. Yeah. Um. But it just I I look at the game different, bro. I got my 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 goal is I got too much to do to be trying to brag on the wins right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a lot of shit that's planned that's out dope that, of you, though. that I gotta that I gotta, I gotta accomplish first. So these like going on tour and selling out tours like. I'm grateful. God is good. You know what I'm saying? But I'm supposed to have been doing that. Mm. I'm supposed to have been doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit's supposed to have been happening. So I feel like I'm playing catch up. So I'm not going to brag on some shit. I feel like I was supposed to have been doing. But everything happened on God's timing. But 
I, I do celebrate my wins now. I just don't be on the ground with it. We turn up, we vibe out, you know what I'm saying? We we get right. Yeah, he's a party king. You know what I'm saying? What are some of the mistakes that you have made? Uh, you know, like you said, you've been through a lot through the industry. What are some of those mistakes that you made back then and you know better now? Um, the biggest mistake I made probably is not, you know what I'm saying, being being on top of my business at in the beginning. And, you know, having a good lawyer and reading contract, that's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is a lesson. You know what I'm saying? I learned from my lessons, but just business. Once yeah. I learned my business, I think I was good. You didn't read none of your contracts? No. Who read them? My lawyer. And you don't have that lawyer anymore, obviously. No. Is that the biggest mistake that I think a lot of artists yes. make? Yes. <laughs> but, how, but how do people get in those situations? I'm just asking because it's, it's a lot of new artists that's going to be coming up. That's gonna be wanting so to know easy, this information. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, that that is that too. But my lawyer was, it was a conflict of interest. My lawyer was my manager lawyer. Mm. So if he gonna make sure he good, which thing he gonna do for me? Kind of like TLC, their lawyer was LaFace's lawyer. You know what I'm saying? So the lawyer playing both sides. So who 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 we gonna trust? Not even trust. Who we gonna? What side he gonna pick? Mm -hmm. gonna pick Somebody gotta get the shit in. And it's going it's gonna to be the one that, you know, he's been with the longest, the new guy. The new guy going to get the shit in. But, you know what I'm saying? But, like I said, it's old shit. Um, but it's great information for yeah, especially is, upcoming artists yeah. and for mm -hmm. people who may not know and may be in it right now. For sure. Just get you a good lawyer. Just someone you can trust. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to trust in yeah, this game. Say, isn't that difficult to Yeah, so he's like, you got to just, you got to just, this shit, a, this shit a gamble. This shit a risk. At the end of the day, all this shit a risk. You know what I'm saying? Play at your own cost. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly So that's that's all it is Just be smart Like if a lawyer Tell you some shit Don't just go with it Do your research Make sure that shit correct You know what I'm saying Cause that motherfucker Can just flip the script And just do some other shit You look up You thinking you was good But now you in a worse situation Than you was in Yeah. So Rare Sound The label mm -hmm. Do you Are you accepting artists What are you looking for Um Yeah Well I wouldn't say Accepting artists right now Cause we already have artists And producers right now That we focusing on But Okay um, We're going through A rebranding phase right now mm -hmm. Um How many artists you got Or producers Two Two Okay And three producers Well two producers You mm -hmm. know Trapping in London Shout out J-Rod Me and Float to London Is me and London Project By the way Um But we're going through A rebranding phase You know what I'm saying I think I think right now Is, is a time where of course, I'm signed to my myself, which is, you know what I'm saying, rare, technically. So I think we need to focus on me to take the brand to a whole other level and then expand and mm -hmm. partner with, you know what I'm saying, different funds or be, you know, venture capital funds or major labels and bring the capital in. I got to build the leverage first. Facts. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because for the last three, four years, I've been coming out of my pocket trying to fund this shit and it's, it get exhausted. You know Did what I'm saying? Did you ever fix your relationship with the DJs? Yeah. We came back and gave Plex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only way. I was gonna say, what was that smirk for? <laughs> that was the, that was the only, only way. way out. <laughs> that was the only way out, man. We had to. Uh, at, at that, it was shit, man. Okay, Cam, man, we appreciate you for being for so sure. fun, so transparent mm -hmm. with for us. Sure. For yeah, you know all of that, man. We appreciate you, and uh, we looking forward to more music. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Rare sound. You know what I'm saying? I'll be seeing y'all in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll yeah, see y'all yeah. outside somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no, thank y'all, man. Shout out to Baller, uh, Baller Alert. Appreciate the love. We're going to keep this shit going. And feel free to come back when you Yeah, come back like. anytime. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, come back. I want the next time y'all see me, I made a, the biggest power move that they ain't seen. That one, I want to come back. Okay. Likewise. You know what I'm saying? I'm going sure, to make Likewise. sure we in the club that the, that the DJs. Please, because you be in that motherfucker, like I know shit. Yeah. And you be in that motherfucker. I ain't yeah. never seen you in the club. I don't think you go to the club. I, I don't do that. Nah, okay. I, 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 I go, go to, to you. I let them handle that. I let them handle that. I'm going to foot out, man. I can't wait to. I've been doing this for too, too long, man. I'm still out here in these streets. Oh, God. But before we get out of here, we do got a pep talk with K Camp. What's up, man? It's me, K Camp, aka Float. And um, my motivation, you know, is only way is up. Stay persistent. Stay consistent. Um, don't let nobody steer you away from your dreams. If you got a passion, if you if you feel like it's it's coming true from your heart, go for it. You know, um, get you a good lawyer, good entertainment lawyer, criminal lawyer. It don't matter. Just get you a good lawyer. Um, stay down. You know what I'm saying? Trust the process. Every day, you know what I'm saying, going to be dark. You know what I'm saying? We made it out of the dark, dark tunnel, so you can too. Keep grinding. This is Float. You dig? Yeah.